everybody. Hi friends old and new. Welcome to this episode of Creative Visions TV. I'm Karen Dahlman, your host of the show. So I'm really happy to have you here today because the topic is a topic that I get asked about all the time. Not just a few times, not several times, not a few handful of times. I get asked it many, many, multiple times. And the question is this, why won't my Ouija board work? Great question. It's a great place to start because all too often we watch movies, we look at things on the internet, we watch TV, and we what we see is that the, you pull this game out of a box and all of a sudden it starts working. Well, that's not really how it works. However, there are exceptions where it can work that way, but for the most part, if you can't get to work right away, you're, you're with most people who can't get it to work right away either. So, what do we do? Well, what we do is relax. The first thing to do is just to relax about it and because it does take time. And so we've got to really get yourself out of your left brain thinking, which is more linear, results oriented, it's got to happen like that kind of thinking, and more into the right brain. It is the creative, the receptive, the imaginative side of our faculties. And this is a part of you that's going to be able to feel, recognize, and understand that very, very subtle movement that the planchette does make. So you ask yourself, is this board not the right board? Do I need the typical William Fold, Parker Brothers, Hasbro type of board? It, it, can I use uh, wooden boards or, can, or does it have to be cardboard or masonite? Or can I use boards made out of glass? It does it not work because I'm using the wrong planchettes? How about this one? Does it not work because I'm not saying enough prayers or invocations or I'm not using the right candles or crystals or any combination of all those above? Or does it not work because the spirits just don't like me and I just don't do this type of stuff well? Okay, let's back up. It's none of the above. It's none of the above. Although those things can influence, it's really none of the above. What makes this tool work? Well, let's talk about what you can do to help yourself have good results where you walk away with communication that's intelligent, legible, understandable, and you're proud of what you're receiving and you feel good about it. Now, I'm not here to feed you a bunch of scary stuff, spooky stories, although I've had some very interesting and strange things happen while using the board, but I'm really here to help you have great results and to actually get your planchette moving. I mean, after all, you got your board so you could have these kinds of experiences. So let's talk about the top five things, top five things that you can do right now to have good experiences with this tool, the Ouija board. Number one, know that it is just a tool and nothing else, period. It's just a tool. What this means is it has no magical powers embedded within it. You know, it's made out of either just cardboard, masonite, wood. It could even be glass. It could be metal. It can be made out of many different things. But what you're going to find is that part doesn't matter so much, especially in the beginning. But if it's just a tool, then what makes it work? Great question. What makes it work? What makes it work is you. You are what makes it work. You are the operator of this tool. It's not unlike any other tool you might find in a toolbox or you might find in your tool shed. Tools are used for certain things. They're used to build, they're used to fix, they're used to create. Um, you could even think of a tool such as your automobile is a tool. It's a tool you use to get from point A to point B. And you know when you get behind the wheel and sitting in the driver's seat comes great responsibility. And I'm saying with this tool, the same thing. What comes when you get behind the planchette as the operator of the communications is that it requires certain responsibility. So again, remember, it's just a tool. Number two, state your intentions. Know why you want to use this tool. Know what you want to connect or communicate with. Know what your goals are. So that's your intention. So again, state your intentions. Write them out, state them aloud, put them into a prayer before you start your session. And you also want to state your intentions so you are clear. You want to have clarity when you come to this tool so you can connect with those energies that you're trying to connect with. And you also want anybody else in the room with you to know what those intentions are so they're on the same bandwidth, if you will, that you're on. 
Number three, lift your spirits too. You lift your spirits to connect with spirits. And so what this means is get into a great state of feeling, a great state of being. Drop your worries at the door. Don't bring those to the table. Don't bring them to the board. Get yourself in a place where you feel comfortable, you feel content, and you're relaxed. Again, relaxing does so much. It allows you to slip into that right side of your brain. And the more higher your vibration is, meaning the better you're feeling, the easier it is for you to reach into other realms and other dimensions where those beings exist. So lift your spirits. Four, refrain from the yes and no trap. <laughs> so many people get stuck in this where what they do is just ask yes, no questions. Instead, ask open-ended questions. So what does this mean? This means ask questions such as, who is here and what is your message for us? What is it you would like us to know today? Instead of saying, is grandma here? That's a yes or no answer. Or is my guide here? That's a yes or no answer. The further you can get from asking yes, no questions, the further you will get with the progression of using this tool, meaning you will get more things spelled out. And soon you'll be receiving not just a few words, but sentences and paragraphs. And then you get really great detail. And then the messages become clearer and clearer to you, and there's no ambiguity. You're not second guessing or trying to figure out just what are they saying. Instead, it's very clear what they're saying. After all, this is called a talking board. It's called a talking board because it has an alphabet and numbers on it. So let them learn to talk. Let yourself learn to talk with this tool when you speak to them. So keep it open-ended. Number five, implement what I call the three P's of communication. The first one is patience, the second is practice, and the third one is perseverance or persistence. Let's explore those a little bit. So this tool does require practice. You pop it out of the box, it's not going to work right away as we already discussed. So take time getting to know this tool. Um, spend about anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes in the beginning if you're using it by yourself. If you're working with a partner, you might, have, you might be able to spend a little more time. But, but set, set a timer and don't go beyond that. Just allow yourself to get used to using this tool, sitting there with your fingers on the planchette lightly, because after all, it does require a different skill set of muscles, believe it or not, and pay so, so much patience while you're sitting there. So you've got to practice, practice, practice. Just like anybody doing any kind of sport or a new skill, a lot of practice goes into it. Whether you're an athlete, whether you're an artist, whether you're a dancer, whether you're just learning to write poetry, everything takes practice and practice happens over time. So be patient with yourself, that's number two. Be patient with yourself and be patient with the process because it does, again, it takes time. And patience will allow you to realize you can slow down, you can breathe, it's not gonna happen overnight. It may, it may but it probably won't. It probably will take six to eight sessions or maybe even longer. I know people who've sat there for eight to nine months before they could get it to move. That's okay. It happens to a lot of people that way. It's just, this is not a normal thing that we're used to d using. We're not used to using these, these different faculties of our brain, of our mind, of our spirituality. We're not used to getting in these different spaces within ourselves where we can, we can feel the subtle energies of the planchette. That in itself takes a while to even learn what that feels like. So definitely have patience with this process. And also patience, you know, goes a long way when you're working with different energies. Um, it, it, it's, it's like being kind. You're giving them the time that they need to also learn to use this, this tool. My guides tell me that it's not an easy tool to use in the beginning. It does require a force on their end to be able to match our energies and then to also come down in their energies to meet ours so we can understand the communication. So that does take time, so be patient. And the third one is perseverance and persistence. You guys, stick with it. If you wanna use this tool, stick with it and I guarantee you're gonna get some good results as long as you stick to it and try to implement these five concepts. So, there you have it. The basic five that I can give you. Let me know how it's going for you down below in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. Share with the others some of your techniques for getting this tool to work for you. Also, let me know if you have any questions or you want further clarification on, on any of the things I discussed today. 
you know, after all, I really want this to be a good experience for you. I can only say such positive mind and heart expanding things about using this tool. It has been an incredible journey for me that's been lasting for well over 40 years of using this tool myself. If you want to learn more about this tool, its history, how to further use it, and some of the stories behind it, and even my own experiences, be sure to check out my book, The Spirits of Ouija, Four Decades of Communication. All of my books have been written with the help of my spirit guides, and the whole idea is to remind every single one of us that we can do this work. It's a natural ability that was given to us when we were born into this world to be able to reach into the unseen dimensions and have communications with them. There's nothing spooky or scary about this. It doesn't have to be that way. And if we took the board away, we could still do this work. Again, it's just a tool that may help us to remember or to become the permission that we need to reach into these realms. So have fun with it. Enjoy yourself with this tool and know that you can have great communications. You've got to believe it first and eventually it will happen for you. So thank you for watching this show. Please subscribe to my channel as I have so much more information to share with you. So join me here and also uh, join this channel because we have live sessions. Uh, we ask questions on your behalf. You get to interact directly with the guides and I have a lot of really, really cool expert guests who come on and talk about their experiences in working with the Unseen Dimensions. So again, thank you for watching the show today. This was Creative Visions TV and I'm Karen Dahlman. I look forward to seeing you again real soon. Now get out there and have fun exploring these Unseen Dimensions. Happy boarding! Bye.